Hey guys, Chris here. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys my full tour of the exterior, interior, infotainment system, and then a test drive of this, the brand new Smart Hashtag One. So if you like electric car content, if you like EVs in general, and well, the new Smart Hashtag One, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, sound that notification bell, Thank you very much. The new Smart Hashtag One is a small, compact electric car built on the SEA platform. And it's a joint venture between, well, Smart or Mercedes-Benz and the Chinese auto manufacturer Geely. This car is very closely related to the new Volvo EX30, which I did get a chance to check out at the launch in Milan earlier this year, and also the Zeker X. So one out of three, Pretty interesting to see how this car will compare to the other two. And also EX30, possibly a very popular car in Norway, especially here on the channel. And it's gonna be cool to see how this actually compares. So first impressions, I think the exterior is a really, really nice design. It's compact. It's a little bit, you know, crossover SUV shape. I think the ground clearance is 16.1 centimeters, so a little more than you would get in other types of cars, electric cars. You can see that it has some, you know, cladding around the wheel arches. There's a little bit of clearance from the top of the wheel arch to, to the wheel. So it's kind of like crossover shapey. Also clamshell hood. This does have a frunk, which is 15 liters. And you can see that there's a proximity key. Once you step up to the car, it will actually, well, unfold or unhinge the door handles they will come out from the body and yeah overall i think this is an attractive car and then once you step back it will actually lock a little bit aggressive so yeah but okay cool cool style cool look i think the rear three quarter very mercedes with that light bar reminds me of other mercedes and smart being you know a a brand under the mercedes umbrella that does make a lot of sense but it's also youthful mercedes may you know appeal to a little bit more of a grown-up audience and older people i think this is youthful more playful not sure about the hashtag one you know the naming scheme of smarts but it, it kind of makes sense the one's probably going to be their smallest vehicle and now Smart is a fully electric brand. They're not gonna come with any combustion engine cars. So, so yeah, I think this is really cool. This deep blue paint color is, is really nice with the contrasting black roof. And then you have some chrome details around the windows, the roof rails, or it's actually like brushed aluminum. Not quite chrome, brushed aluminum, really nice. And then you have the Smart logo here on the rear of the C pillar, or actually technically a D pillar because this is probably the C pillar, and then this is a D because of that rare, small rare three quarter window. You have the charging port here. Ah, let's see if we can unlock the car. The key is a little bit funny and fun. Check this out, guys. If you guys can see that round smart key, and then you press unlock, unlock again, and then the rear door handles also come out of the body. So, rear charging port here, CCS2 standard here in Europe, 150 kilowatts of peak charging speed i think it does 10 to 80 percent in like 27 minutes this in norway is going to only come with the big battery pack which is 66 kilowatt hours gross and 62 kilowatt hours usable wltp rated range on the four wheel drive version is 400 uh, kilometers and on the rear wheel drive version is 420 kilometers both you know four wheel drive versions both this which is the pulse and the brabus will have 420 kilometers of wltp rated range this being you know the all wheel drive version the pulse it has dual electric motors 428 horsepower and does 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.5 seconds the brabus one with the same power uh, you know it has a boost mode and will do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.9 seconds which is interesting so all the numbers the battery pack sizes and also the acceleration figures are less than what you would find on the Volvo EX30. And also pricing here in Norway, the rear wheel drive version starts from 400,000 kroners, the four wheel drive version for 450, and the Brabus from 500,000 kroners. But there are no options. They only come in these three trims in Norway, all with a big battery pack, and there are no options. And yeah, so so I mean, you, you get what you get. It's quite a fully spec car. This car has, 360 camera, it has a panoramic sunroof, 19 inch wheels, all the driver assistance systems for that price. I don't think that is too bad. So guys, let me know what you think about the exterior. Let's hop in and I'll show you guys the interior. 
Before I show you guys the interior, let's take a look at the front. So you have a latch here on the driver's side. You do that twice, and then you can see the clamshell opens up here. No latch, so you just pull it up, and then you have a cover here. A very small 15 liter franc. It's nice to have it to store away cables and stuff like that, but really it's too small for being practical. This is your brake fluid. Where's your window washer fluid then? Is it, ah, it's here. That's strange. Under a plastic cover. That's weird. And that already broke. No, it didn't break. Okay, but that's weird. Cheap, cheap piece of plastic. But your brake fluid is, is uh, open like that, but the windshield fluid wiper fluid is hidden that is a bit strange okay and then you press this down oh there we go in the middle it's all the way closed okay that's good enough so let's walk over to the trunk so this does have an electric tailgate you press the button there and then it opens up and according to the internet this trunk is 323 liters, but according to the uh, presentation we got today, this trunk is 411 liters, and that is including underfloor storage here. Um, not very deep, but you have room for cables and stuff like that. So it's pretty nice. It's not the biggest trunk. Uh, you actually have a proper partial shelf here, which is interesting. Nice materials, nice carpeted. You can see my bag, uh, camera bag there as reference to the size. You may be able to fit a small stroller here, but yeah. So let's close that up and then let's hop into the front here. And what I want to do is I want to set the driving position uh, to me and then check out the rear seats. Okay. I think that's it. I'm comfortable there. Yeah. No tilt on the front seat though. Interesting. No tilt. Okay, so that's my driving position. I'm comfortable there. Let's hop into the back and check out the rear seat. So as I said, this car is closely related to, and then this locked here. Uh, then I have to unlock it with the key. So as I said, this car is closely related to the um, Volvo EX30, uh, which I did get to see in Italy uh, at the launch. And my one complaint about that car is that the rear seats are very tiny. This does have the same wheelbase, 2.75 meters, but this is a lot more spacious. Look at that, guys. Look at that, guys. I actually have about... I don't know, what's that, three, four centimeters? And also headroom, very, very generous. I'm five foot 10 or 178 centimeters. So an average adult in the West, maybe a little bit taller than an average adult, depending on you know what European country you're looking at, but adults, no problem here. The guy um, who did the presentation, the market guy for Smart, he's 194 centimeters. And he sat in that position there behind uh, behind me when I sat in the front seat and had no problems at all. Headroom is pretty generous. I mean, this is, this is comfortable for four adults, much better than the Volvo EX30 and also even the middle seat. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. And you can see here, you have a lot of space in the footwells. That is actually quite impressive. That is not bad at all. Yeah. Wow. You know, I'm impressed by that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know, maybe width-wise it would be a little bit harder. But yeah, materials on the rear doors also, not too shabby. I mean, you have these, this, uh, um, which feels like what Mercedes are using, the uh, faux leather in their cars. And also this is nice, this white painted um, trim here. This is not too bad. Also window switches, high quality. This kind of looks like the, you know, the Burmester sound system. This does not have the upgraded sound system with 13 speakers. To get that, you have to go to the, the Brabus model. This is the middle model, the Pulse. And let's hop into the front and check out the front cabin. So seats look very nice, electrically operated. As everything you see here is standard. Frameless mirrors, roof rails. Oh, a last thing I want to talk, talk to you guys about is that this car can be optioned in Norway with a trailer hitch, 1.6 tons of towing capacity. That is not too bad. I think wheels are also very attractive, 19 inches. So front door feels nice, high quality. Also this trim here, and then you have hard touch plastics lower in the cabin. But again, this isn't, you know, a very expensive car. So that we absolutely can accept. This isn't the Mercedes EQE for one and a half million kroners. Steering wheel looks really nice. This is the same type of plastic you do get on Mercedes, but it's matte here. It doesn't look as nasty. And again, this is a much, much cheaper car than, you know, those expensive Mercedes I've been driving lately. 
buttons, everything feels fine and, and, and nice. It's high quality. Um, this is not touch capacitive crap. These are proper buttons and I do appreciate that. That is really nice. You have your cruise control settings here on the left side um, and then you have your volume and even you have a, it looks like a skip forward uh, button that you don't get in a Mercedes. Overall quality, yeah, this is pretty, pretty decent. Also, you just this stitched uh, full leather on the dashboard. This interior is really nice. This white trim, I really do like it. It brightens up the interior a lot. You have storage here, wireless phone charger, two USB-C ports. And then you have dual cup holders here, place for your phone. And then here, an armrest that is actually cooled. I don't think the EQE SUV I was driving even had that. Glove box here. All of this feels very Mercedes, looks Mercedes, these vents here, and that is not a bad thing at this price point. You have a also a panoramic sunroof here with a cover you can open. I mean, these sun visors, super nice. This is nicer than you find in other Mercedes products. Seriously, guys, I'm impressed by the quality here. Is it as nice as the Volvo EX30? Not sure. I haven't seen that car in a few months now, but I don't think it, it's much worse. It's a different design and it's cool to see that these two cars built on the same platform pretty much the same drivetrain with different battery packs are so different on the inside so let's see if we can take a quick look at the infotainment system here before um, I take you guys out on the road I think this is still like um, not a production version yet I actually didn't ask so let's go in here because it, every time you get into the car it goes into you know that, that setting Looks pretty cool. This is not Mercedes MBUX uh, skinned as something else. This is not what Volvo used with another skin. This is a uh, you know a joint venture between Geely and Mercedes or Smart rather. They built this infotainment system from the ground up. Is what I've been told, and they said it's not Google based, but it looks really Google. So you have shortcuts here, navigation system up here. I do agree. So let's see if this will actually do route planning. So I've just been to Munich. So let's see if we do Munich, what the car will tell us. 1,300 kilometers, that's a little bit ambitious. It's actually like closer to 2,000 kilometers. Directions, because this is, if this route planning is as good as it is in Mercedes, that is pretty interesting. Second route, first route, let's go the first route. It says minus 378%, then it should know how many times we should charge. Again, not sure if this is a fully working version of an infotainment system, but uh, it doesn't seem like it does has any route planning to date. Not yet, at least. Battery cannot reach the destination and navigation provides a new route to add. Okay, it does? Hmm. Interesting. So while that is thinking, yeah, what do you guys think about this interior? High quality. This is not bad. These seats are attractive also. They do feel quite comfortable. Yeah, decent room. I mean, this center console is a little bit big, but nothing like in a Polestar 2. It, it, this thing just feels and looks nice. So yeah, nothing is happening here. Nothing is happening here. Also, oh, I forgot to show you guys that this uh, small screen here. So this is 12.8 inches. And then this is 9.8 inches. Really cool display. Uh, I don't know what it's going to show. It shows your trip computer and, and stuff like that. Um, we're not going to be able to do any efficiency testing. I only have about 45 minutes with this car before the next guy has, yeah, to film his video. So, so yeah, I think that's about the interior. That's about the exterior. Let me know in the comment section, guys, down below what you think about the exterior or the interior. Let's take this out on the road then. Okay, so let's just turn down the climate, put it into auto. Is it in sync? Now let's go over there and sync it. 20 degrees is fine. And yeah, let's take this out on the road. I just driven it up the road from here to there, but let's see, we have about 15 minutes until we have to get back to uh, Mercedes, so we don't have a lot of time. So immediately, it does feel, uh, what is it binging at? Why did it bing? I don't know, we're at 89% state of charge and the car's indicating 355 kilometers of range. So there's a little bit of region when you go off the throttle. Uh, it does not coast immediately. There are no region pedals like you do have in Mercedes, but you have energy recuperation standard and strong. So sta strong, okay, then it will, uh, it doesn't look like it's, fully one pedal driving 
Yeah, it will coast, it will uh, creep. Yeah, it will creep. Auto power steering is also set to auto, which is set to medium. And we also have a head up display here, which is really nice. Uh, complements the display down here nicely. Usually I'm not a huge fan of head up displays because a lot of them are like a little bit, uh, pay attention. Okay, so this has like attention assist and when I'm looking at uh, something else than the absolute road uh, assistant, let's see if we can turn that off. <laughs> uh, oh no. Automatic speed adjustment. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was just like a warning because we're like in a uh, residential area with pedestrians and stuff like that. But doesn't look like we can do, uh, let's see, vehicle settings. If we can do, no, it doesn't look like we can do any more. Like we, it doesn't have one proper and true one pedal driving. Again, it may have guys, but I don't really have the time to dive deep into the menus. If I'm going to tell you guys everything, what is it beeping at? Why well, doesn't it even tell me? Like it's beeping, but there's no like visual cue to, to what it is. So it's not as soft set up as Mercedes, right? Mercedes are usually very softly set up, even, you know, the AMG versions, especially the ones on, on air suspension, but mostly Mercedes are quite comfortable. This is a little bit stiffer, better body control. And most of the time I actually prefer this driving setup where the car is more controlled. It's not very cushiony but it's still comfortable. This car's on 19 inch wheels. There's no other options for this car. So, you know, they haven't had to tune it for different types of wheels and, and, and that is always nice. I mean, 19 inch wheels, fine enough. These were 235 millimeters wide. Not having two big wheels, I think is good for range and efficiency. I love big wheels. I worked with wheels and tires for many years, about a decade ago. So I'm a proponent, proponent of, of, of aesthetics. Like I like things that look nice. Cars, I like nice materials and stuff like that, but there is a balance, not giving car, cars too big of wheels. Distractive, drive carefully. Distract, I'm not distractive, I'm talking to the camera. Hmm. We got a message on the head-up display, distractive. But okay, I mean like here, up here where we are now in Gevstar, a lot of broken roads, the pavement is really, really bad. But it's not too bad, it's, it's not uncomfortable. It's not stiff, so this is your city driving you know, small car, great, great visibility. I have my wide uh, angle lens on now, guys, so I can give you guys a proper view. You can see how big the greenhouse is. And you know, the, the, the greenhouse is a little bit upright, right? A little bit upright, like you would find on a Land Rover, Range Rover. And it kind of feels like that, like you're sitting in an SUV because the visibility is great. A pillars, not too thick. B pillars, nicely placed. C pillar or D pillar back there. I think it's just a C pillar with a small window. Ah, you could call it the C or D pillar. Pretty decent, pretty decent visibility. Even the rear window, not too bad, not too bad. I mean, visibility is good. So let's take this out on, not the motorway, but the ring road here uh, around Oslo. I don't, again, what are you beeping at? What are you beeping at? Is it the speed? We're going 26 and a 40. Okay, let's turn off some uh, assistance here. Like, it, I don't want it to be for speed and stuff like that. Yes. Oh, that's, I don't know. That was lane departure warning. So overall, it feels very solid. I mean, it feels like a quality product. Does not feel like a Mercedes. And I think that's a good thing. It feels more sporty. It feels more youthful. Yeah. And you're sitting high. I mean, I, I have decent headroom. I don't have to adjust my seat up more or less. I could put it up a little bit, but then I'm sitting quite a bit high. Yeah, this is a decent, decent driving car doing, I don't know, 80 kilometers an hour here on a speedometer. Reasonably quiet. Let's see if we can turn down the fan a little bit there. Put it to two and auto. There we go. And then the home. But I'm curious about the infotainment system. I'll have to dive deep into that uh, in another video once I get my hands on a, a press car for a longer period of time because I don't have time to look into that at all. So, but what I want to do, we're going to go down here, we're going to turn around and then on the uh, other on-ramp, we're going to distractive. I'm not distractive at all. I'm looking forward. This is annoying. This is annoying. You have to turn this off. These like driver systems are more distracting than helpful a lot of the time. But I'm going to go down here. 
going on ramp and then do an acceleration run to see, yeah, is this quick? So like immediately, I can't find any drive modes, vehicle settings, vehicle condition, no, general, no drive modes, no drive modes. Okay, so this has 428 horsepower, it's tuned, uh, not as quick as that uh, Bra Brabus version, four and a half seconds, zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Hmm. It doesn't feel that fast. So roll on is pretty like soft. Once you hit the throttle, it's okay. If you're a little bit more aggressive on the throttle, it will give you a little bit more, but it doesn't feel four and a half seconds fast. It doesn't because it doesn't have that immediacy. Again, maybe there are like settings here to go into a more sport mode, but nothing on the steering wheel, nothing around the driver, nothing immediately here in the you know uh, infotainment system that i could find driver systems vehicle settings lighting quick controls nothing here with the quick, quick controls hmm. that is interesting general no so it doesn't feel that fast but again i mean you're not buying this for the performance you're buying this because it has rear wheel drive i'm pretty sure the brabus version is is tuned uh more aggressive but something just like a Polestar 2 performance, uh, which does zero to 100 kilometers an hour in like 4.2 seconds, feels much, much quicker. That Mercedes uh, EQE SUV 43 AMG I was driving down to Germany does also zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.5 seconds. The same as this, feels a lot, lot quicker and only has about 50 horsepower more. So I'm pretty sure I just can't find the settings for like uh, sport mode and throttle cal calibration. But as things are now, I mean, it's fast enough. It's gonna do the thing. It, it, it's, it's, it does zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.5 seconds. It just doesn't feel that fast. But I don't think that's what really matters about this car. It's a solid car, practical interior, great visibility, and the size is awesome, feels high quality. Yes, it is a lot of money, but what electric car isn't a lot of money now? As an alternative to a Tesla, and then those binging, you guys can hear it, bing and bong. Why am I going here? This is the McDonald's. Okay, we can do test the turning radius. <laughs> 11 meters, we're going over there. Usually with my friend, I go to this McDonald's, so I'm used to uh, going here. <laughs> okay, decent turning radius. Nobody will buy this car because uh, it's, it's a really nice package. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna cost you money. But compared to the Tesla Model 3, I haven't driven a new one. This is quieter, more comfortable. Um, like easier to use greater tech you just can turn off those bongs but range maybe isn't isn't the best but maybe you're not buying this for long range range you're buying this car because you want you live in a city and you want an electric car that works for that is pretty decent so there we go guys that was my exterior and interior tour as well as my first impressions test drive of this the brand new smart hashtag one the Pulse version, big battery pack, four wheel drive, and a lot of equipment. And I think as a package, it, it's quite simple. You have three trims here in Norway, Pro Plus, Pulse, and, and Brabus. And this comes with, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of equipment. The only thing I didn't get to test was the stereo. Uh, that may be my only reason to upgrade to, to the Bra Bra Brabus. Brabus? <laughs> But I have to say that at 450,000 kronos as a complete package, you're going to have to add winter wheels, probably another 20,000 kronos here in Norway, maybe a trailer hitch if you want. I don't, I think it's actually quite decent value because it does drive like just a smaller Mercedes. It feels like a smaller Mercedes on the inside, but a sportier Mercedes, a more youthful Mercedes. So I'm excited to test this car out more seriously once I get my hands on it and also to compare to the Volvo EX30. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.